We've had big plans over the last couple of days to really renovate and gut this van to make it what we needed to be. But I tried to start yesterday and it wouldn't start, which led me to trying to jumpstart the car, which I've never done before. Learning how to jumpstart a car. Make sure that both vehicles are in park and that their emergency brakes are on and engines off. Red end to positive. At least the first clamp, there's not, not much risk involved. Which one's positive? It's not labeled. Here we go. And that didn't work, so I tried again. I'm completely trusting this YouTube video. I know, like being 30, I should have learned this at some stage, but that's what YouTube's for. Not even a little. That was a bit of a fail to start, but while we wait for the RAA, I'm gonna start cleaning out a few things that we know we definitely don't want when we hit the road. Still, no one has claimed the surfboard in the comments, so if you want it, you're in Adelaide. Come pick it up, let me know. I decided to start taking things out of the van. I took a bunch of stuff out and then wanted to take a look at the electrical and that didn't work. What the f***? The car was so dead that the battery wouldn't let the doors unlock. But the REA came here, we started the van, I drove around for 45 minutes to try and charge the battery, got home in a downpour, so I ran inside. And by the time I came back outside to restart the whole process, it was dead again. So this morning, the mechanics who couldn't fix the van for the last month that it's been there are coming back to try again because it feels like they've done something in the wiring to make this battery just drain constantly. Before the mechanic get here to take our van back to the shop, they've now had it way longer than we've had it, it's this whole ownership. It's officially their van. Yeah, by time consumed, like yeah, they're, it's their van. We are gonna still continue and take out a couple of things inside, even though we can't access through our main slide door. I am determined to not let this fully hinder our progress in getting it where we want it to be. Yeah, I agree. Even though they should only have it for a day. <laughs> I'm not the best sewer, like I can use a sewing machine. My mum is great, so I think I'm gonna enlist her help. But I think we could still use these eyelets and have the same idea like the rod system, just with cuter curtains that block out more light and that actually go all the way around. <laughs> Cause these ones end here for some reason. These curtains secured, we just need to measure a couple more because they don't have curtains currently. Girl, we have no idea what we're doing. Is that straight? No. <laughs> we got our van back from the mechanics for the, what, sixth, seventh time? They've charged the battery up. 100% apparently it was just so super dead that even a 45 minute drive to charge through the alternator was not enough for it to be able to start again. Apparently there is something called a parasitic drain which is something I'm learning a lot about from our fridge. But the interesting thing is they unplugged it from the socket it was in and plugged it in a different way like an AC adapter way rather than a cigarette. Little hallway. See I know no terminology whatsoever but anyway I'm being sidetracked. Today, I get to look at the electronics. <laughs> because it's finally charged, the central locking works and I can open the door. But there's a plate there that's like meant to be for a bar setup. If you're gonna take it by the beach and serve some beers, which is not legal, but fun. I'm gonna unscrew the plate and in there should be like an inverter or a battery or just kind of more stuff. I hope that in like two months time, I'll look back at this video and be like, what an idiot. I know so much more now, but there's construction on our road. So it's quite loud. Inverter, I think, red eye, battery. Battery number two, just kidding. <laughs> so when we picked up this van, this was all connected already. The fridge was on, it was plugged in here. So this plugged in down here. After we picked it up from the mechanic, this time where our battery was draining significantly quickly and we weren't able to really start the car at all, this was plugged in to this to this socket here. Theory is they're both fridge power and this is just drawing from the wrong battery. This is drawing from the battery that also starts the engine. So we have to just keep investigating. <laughs> Next thing we're gonna do, I think, is start ripping this stuff out, getting rid of this, getting rid of this seat, this. And we're gonna try and lower where the bed is because I need to be able to sit on the bed. And right now, as is without any mattress, I actually can, which is amazing. So it means we don't have to lower it too much, but with the mattress on, I wanna be comfy and able to sit here. We also have to figure out if we're gonna keep these because can't lean up against that, but I can lean up against that. Need new window covers. I can see it coming together though. There is a lot of potential. 
So today, the plan. Inside the van, there are these rails that were on the roof that the guy was strapping his surfboard to. They need to come out first thing. Secondly, I'm gonna actually open up this back and take apart the bed frame. So pretty much the main crux of the van where all our storage capacity comes from and where we sleep and really the main functionality that we want for the van, being able to sleep in it, is what we're gonna start tackling today. Small update about the air conditioning unit. So this is a heating control unit that sits in the dash of the van. This is what's broken on ours, so we can't switch from hot to cold because inside here, it's not attached to anything. Ours has been broken for a while and our mechanic was saying there was none of these left in Australia. Then literally about 500 meters down the road, we found another van, same year as ours, and it had one of these still intact. So we went down there ourselves and pulled it out. It was a fun adventure. Took it back to our mechanics. Apparently the same tiny piece of plastic that we need is also broken in this one. So I don't really know what the solution is. We might have to look at like custom 3D printing a piece of plastic to be able to get it to work, but that's future problems. Today, we're rebuilding stuff. And by rebuilding, I mean deconstructing. <laughs> So these boards are what he was using to store his surfboard through. They hung from like straps. I don't foresee us needing these at all, so taking them out. Immediately, a little bit of a setback from the roof. So the one thing about a build like this is everything you do, you uncover more things that need to be done. Okay. Next bit, your roof stuff is down. It looks like there's more height there, just that little couple of centimeters helps. And it is one of the things I've been bumping my head on, so to not have that is a big bonus. But now, the big baby. This is currently the base of the bed. Loads of wasted space, loads of wasted space. And it's just like a box. It doesn't go all the way through. We literally can't fit camping chairs anywhere in this van well. They just have to sit on the floor. So there's some really serious upgrades we need to do. Fortunately, it looks like they're not secured by too much. Old school bracket, couple of mismatched screws. Should be pretty easy to get out. We'll find out. a lot of screws. I put some music on to work to instantly over my head by the fray plate. And I was like, is it a sign? We'll find out. <laughs> I'll show you what I'm working with. Uh, come here. <sighs> so this is kind of the four grid that they had it set it up in and our bed was on top of. Obviously not ideal. I think we are going to have same space used, just drawers that roll out that we can utilize differently. And make some use of this side space, because I don't know why. Unless they had some brilliant idea and it was actually really genius to have that space not used, but I just don't think so. Like, all of this is coming out and I don't think any of it's going to be reused because it's super flimsy, but it's starting to look different. This is how much of a noob I am. I just realized that you don't have to push this to get it to go. Just like the pressure alone does it. Genius. I've unscrewed everything and it's so close to lifting out of one piece. But I can hear Emily's dad and some viewers being like, what an idiot. Just uh, unscrew it more. So I'm gonna keep unscrewing. <laughs> Tried everything I could think of. I've unscrewed everything. It's not budging. Fortunately, now I have to try violence. Say fortunately or unfortunately. <laughs> So different already. So we had flooring to a point and then it stopped under where all the storage would go. But one, there's no way we're gonna find the same flooring to continue that on. And two, we may as well change it. So I think all of that's gonna come up as well. Sticking point is the fridge because I don't wanna take it out here and have to leave it here. But I can't take out all the securing sort of carpentry around it and then be driving home with it flapping around in the back. Show Emily the progress. Wow. <laughs> Wow. This is crazy. It looks so different. So much space. Yeah. The plan is to unbolt this metal frame that's in here. And these are just talking to the camera. 
<laughs> these ones are really easy to find, but uh, we have to go so far back to get the other bolts. Less easy. <laughs> Halfway through getting the bolts off to get the frame thing out, and realizing it's all plugged in electronically too. So, gotta figure that out. We've got the bolts out, but we found that there is a cable running through, so we need to be very careful and isolate the electronics so we don't get electrocuted. Whoever's done this van has put a lot of electronics to link up to the main car motor starting battery, like a lot. And I don't really know why, it's a little bit frustrating. So we need to figure out where they all go and change them to the appropriate place. And apparently it's a 20 amp cable, but a 50 amp fuse. Amp? Amp. What you missed, because I got too excited, is I ripped the top of this off, and now we're gonna unscrew everything we can, and take the fridge out, figure out where it's getting its inverted power from. starting to look really bare, very blank canvassy. I'm getting really, really excited with all the, the different ideas we've got and draw pulleys. I think we're winding down for the day, so I wanted to give you a little summation of what we actually did. I drove up on these stilts, which I'm pretty proud of because I was very scared. We took out the big metal frame that's just as you enter the van. We took out the fridge and the surrounding cabinetry of the fridge. And now we understand a lot more of the electrical. It's unfortunate that a lot is connected to the main car battery and not the leisure battery, but I think we can figure that out. Last thing I want to do is get that chair out, but I don't think it's going to happen today. Right before we finish the day, I thought I would get the side panels out as well, so I did that. Turns out we have a lot of insulation in the walls, which is nice. Apparently it's the ubiquitous, pretty cheap insulation, but one less thing I, I didn't know we have that we do. The tip run we need to do is going to be huge. Huge. I'm going to clean this all up. Done for the day. Working so hard all day. Yeah. I'm excited to see it. Ready? Yeah. Whoa! Wow, you did so much. Why don't do it in inches? Sponsor us, Bosch. May have pulled up some of the floor doing that. She'll be right. <sighs> Winding down. 